Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Uh, because you've chosen wisely to seek understanding and discernment, I pray that God will give you what you have asked for and much more in life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we continue to study about peace, and as it's something that we should practice daily, tonight we need you to guide our thoughts in the right direction for our edification and for your glorification. We thank you for your peace in these perilous times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3 is where we're going to study from tonight. Uh, basically looking at exhortation, which means uh, to draw near. Uh, so these are some things that we're going to look at tonight that we should uh, incorporate into our daily living as we seek to uh, have peace, especially in times like these. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 2 through 3, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, I entreat Eudias and I entreat Satychus to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companions, to help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are bit written in the book of life. This week we're talking about peace in these times, peace in these perilous times in which we are living. Paul exhort believers to come near and to do what he's encouraging them to do. Because of the timeliness of God or timelessness of God's word uh, and God, it stands true that the church of today is being exhorted also to draw near to hear and to do what God has advised us to do. Usually we think of individual peace. Paul in the text is instructing believers as a part of the church of Philippi to practice peace within the body of Christ. If the church can practice peace when we are interacting with one another, then we will be prepared to show the world around us uh, how living lives of peace really looks like what it looks like. The world walks by sight while we walk by faith. And there is a big difference. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Paul entreats Eudias and he entreats Satikas, uh, to agree in the Lord. Find a way to agree, to move on together. And too often we move on separate. Now the difference which arose, uh, whatever the subject in this, this, the dispute was, it had become so serious that instead of the big gap being healed or uh, covered, matters had become chronic. They, they were lingering. It, it, nothing could get them to go away. They were constant. They were frequent and they were ongoing. And too often problems that, or divisions uh, go on and on and on. And we do very little to try and mend the relationships. Uh, uh, relationships that are together can be much more productive than those that are separated. Now, uh, regarding this lack of self-control of your diet between your dias, your dias and Satikas, uh, it had been ca carried. This the in, the news of this had been carried to Paul. Uh, while he was in captivity in Rome. 
while he was in a Roman prison, word had gotten to him. And I'm glad that, in, and, and, and I guess this is a plug to put in for the mail system. I'm glad for the mail system because it allows information to pass from one to another, back and forward, and it has done that for years. And not only does it allow information, but it allows packages also to pass. Now, I realize that we have other systems in place. We have emails. We have cell phones and stuff. We can talk to anybody from anywhere. We can send packages with the, to people or uh, order packages without ever seeing the product. But it's amazing that without all of that, Paul got word of what was going on, the disturbance in the church at Philippi while he was still in prison. And he was able to get instructions back to them from prison. Now, the state of Christian life in the church of Philippi, were, it gave Paul almost an unmixed satisfaction. He regarded with joy their faith and their steadfastness and their liberty, their freedom that they enjoyed. There was no false teaching there. There was no division, most of all, uh, mostly among them. And one, only one thing caused Paul to any kind of discomfort. And it was the lack of harmony between Eudias and Syntychus. He beseeched them to give up their differences and to live lives at peace. In the Lord. It, 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 it's impossible to live lives of peace out of the Lord. In the Lord means that we are practicing right relationship, first of all, with God, between us and God on the vertical planes, up and down. And you might look at the, the, the cross. You've got a a piece of timber that goes up and down, and then there's a piece go across. When we can, is, can, can have peace with God, then God will ensure that we have peace with one another. And the only way that we can have peace with God is through Jesus Christ and his salvific work on Calvary on our behalf. So, this is the motive that he puts before them with a view of bringing about their reconciliation. To live in dispute and hatred is not worthy of those who are in the Lord, who have been redeemed by the Lord and whose whole lives should be an endeavor to please the Lord. With what we are experiencing in society today, like uh, pro police brutality, the divisiveness from the White House to all the way to our house, black on black crime, political divisions against the Republicans and 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 our Democrats and and uh, independents. Husband and wives are at each other's throat uh, part of the time, uh, going and coming. Brothers against brothers, sisters against sisters, mothers against daughters, and, 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 and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and father-in-law against son-in-law. Economic division, the haves and the have-nots. Social division, religious division. And the list goes on and on. God entreats us. He asks us. He's begging us. He's pleading with us. To live lives at peace in the Lord. In order for us to live lives filled with the peace of God, we must have the right priorities. Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first, at first things first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added unto you. All of the things you don't have, all of the things that you uh, want in life. And, 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 and right there is the, the root of a lot of our in, inability to live peacefully with one another. 
all of these things that God wants to add, we're trying to get ourselves. Life as as we practice it so often, especially as the world practices it, and that's why we must be careful that we don't allow the world to shape our thinking, but we must become God's product uh, uh, instruments to shape the world's thinking. Because the world's way of thinking is uh, whoever controls the resources, whoever controls the money, the wealth, are the ones that are in charge. And, and and so I have a couple of biblical examples to share with you, and then I'll be finished with this study. The first one is uh, the story of a rich young man from Mark chapter 10. And the story goes from verse 17 to 30 to 31, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version again. Uh, it says, and he was sitting out on his journey. And a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, good master. This is this is a man meeting Jesus and, and, and he, he introduces, he, he speaks to Jesus as, hey, good master, good teacher. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? None is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, teacher, all of these things I've kept from my youth. And Jesus said to him, and here's what I want to get at and what, what, what I'm going to spend a few minutes at. And Jesus said to him, looking at him, loved him. And it's such such an, uh, 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 an encouragement to know that Jesus is looking at us, first of all, and yet he loves us. So Jesus says to him, you lacked one thing. Go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. And this man went away sorrowful. Because he had much possessions. And, 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 and here he is, rich, and does not have peace. And he's unwilling to do what it takes to have peace. And having a multitude of things, of, of stuff, does not bring us peace. But it's right relationship, right relationship with God and right relationship with one another. That's what bring us peace. And if we are going to have a right relationship with God, we must first of all yield all that belongs to him to him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein belong to the Lord. Everything belongs to him. Everybody belongs to him. And if it's his, he don't have to check with us to take it away from us. We must remember that. Job gives us a wonderful story. And Job surmised that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. My relationship with the Lord, Job is saying, remains intact with or without stuff. Jesus says, if you sell all you have and give to the poor. You're rich. You need to give to the poor. You need to share. You, you need to lose ownership and, and, and gain management. You're just managing what belongs to the Lord. So give it up and then you'll have treasures in heaven. And you'll have peace. And then Jesus says, come and follow me. And he went away sorrowful. 
Now, so, 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 so in this life that we're living in, these times in which we're living, what's important to so many people is who controls the resources? Who controls the money? And money is not evil. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evils. So uh, that, that's the first lesson. Now, the second lesson is found in uh, Mark. Chapter 14, verse one through 11, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, verse one and two. It reads, th this is dealing with envy. And envy breaks your peace. When you feel like you need to be greater than somebody else, when you need to have more influence than other somebody else, when you're jealous of somebody else's influence, when you're jealous of somebody else's success, you've lost your peace. And here are the Pharisees, the ones that should have had peace. And Paul, in our text for this lesson, was working on not the street folks, not the drug addicts, but he was working, first of all, in the church at Philippi, who, 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 who were on the verge of losing their peace. And there were two individuals, two women that had lost their peace. But in, in, in the story of, 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 of Mark, chapter 14, verse one says, after two days was the feast of the Passover. In, in other words, in two days, the feast of the Passover and of the unleavened bread was coming. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft, speaking of Jesus, and put him to death. And the, 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 the reason for them wanting to put him to death was they was envious for him, of him. Look at what they say in verse two. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And a lot of people were leaving them and following Jesus. And envy is found in those that desire to, let's see, how was it put, uh, uh, Lord over the well to be in charge. Want to have everybody checking with them before they make a move. Instead of working together. Now, the next part deals with money and resources. And, and I'm going down to uh, verse seven, basically. Um, and I'll just talk about what happened before. Uh, there was a, a woman that had an alabaster box of perfume. And she comes to Jesus and anoints him with it. One verse says she anoints one 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 gospel writer says she anoints his feet. And then she uses her hair to wipe it, wipe his clean his feet. She used her possession. This was said to be uh, worth a year's salary or so forth. But she gladly used it on Jesus. She had the right priority. But then the disciples of Jesus even had a lot to learn. And there are some modern day disciples of Jesus that still have a lot to learn. And, 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 and his disciples, especially Judas, 
started complaining to Jesus. She wasted all of this when it could have been sold and the money, the resources given to the poor. Now, I question whether they were concerned that much about the poor. And if they were, they had the wrong priorities. Because poor never takes a priority over Jesus. And this woman chose to to do this for Jesus because I don't know how she knew it. She, She probably was just being guided by the Holy Spirit and didn't even realize it. Because she was, in essence, anointing the body of Jesus for his death. For the work that he was going to do for her, for us. So they say to Jesus, we we could have sold this expensive perfume and sold it and 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 use the profit to feed the hungry, in essence, to help the poor. But here's what Jesus says. Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has done this, this good work on me, Jesus says. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you will, you may do them good. But Jesus says, but me, you have not with you. Always. So leave her alone. She has the right priorities. Whatever you put in Jesus' hand will benefit the masses. There was a little boy that 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 that, that brought his his mom had given him lunch. And when 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 they came and asked him for the lunch to give it to the master to try to help somebody. The little lad gave it up. I heard one preacher say uh, he, 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 he shared two little fish and five barley loaves, but he left home with probably more than that. He just had been eating off of it along the way. But that's not biblical now. Uh, but that Jesus was able to use a little to do so much with. And if we would quit being so stingy and put what we have to Jesus' disposal, allow him to use what he is in essence already, he can do so much more with it. And then we can have true peace. Following Jesus, doing what he said do, is not the convenient thing to do, but it's the least that we can do. We must learn to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is not too much for him to ask or expect of us. Seeing that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, And he didn't give him to come and hang out with us because his son, Jesus, says, for this purpose came I into the world. He came to give his life. It's amazing that while they were marching him from judgment hall to judgment hall, while they were questioning him, while they were beating him, Jesus never opened his mouth like a lamb slid to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth until Pilate said, Don't you know I can, I have the power, the authority to take your life or to let you live? Then Jesus spoke up and said, no, but you got it wrong. No man can take my life from me, Jesus says. I lay it down and if I lay my life down, I can take it up again. And he did did die. 
he, he died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary, not for to mend the re broken relationship with God because he had done no wrong, he had committed no sin, but all of us had, and our relationship needed mending. And Jesus mended our broken relationship with God when he died. The veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom, symbolizing that we now have access to go directly to God, that we have or can have a personal relationship with God. And then Paul says, I think it's to the Colossians that, we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. Jesus has, has, has fixed our relationship with God. Now he has given us a ministry to reconcile one another. And that's what Paul is doing. And we have to get beyond wanting to control the resources and to love each other enough that we are willing to share. That nobody will have too much and nobody will have too little because we love God first of all enough to obey him. And that obedience plays out in our willingness to share the resources with one another. That's the cure to society's ill or lack of peace. And with that, I'm finished. Let us pray. Lord, help us to yield to your will and your way of life so that we can enjoy your peace. And as we live in your peace, increase our territory so that we can teach others by the way we live what true peace looks like. In Jesus' unequal name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope you will uh, gain something out of this lesson. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm learning so much. I, I'm, you know, even at this point, the Holy Spirit is able to change me and my thinking. If he's able to change my thinking, he's able to change me. And he's doing that. And I pray that to God that you are being blessed also. You have to be alive to be blessed. To be alive, you have to mask up, wear masks during this time that we're living in. You have to uh, practice social distancing. And you have to practice good hygiene, washing your hands often. And then the Lord will give us peace in the middle of this pandemic. And if you got the peace of God in, in perilous times, you can make good decisions. So that's it. Thank you for joining us and hopefully you'll join us again. Love you. Bye-bye.